Hello and welcome to Link Ahead, the City of Dublin podcast. Okay, folks, our regular listeners will know we end every episode with rapid fire questions. But guess what? We're going to begin with one today. Do you know what all the following have in common? Community health benefits, environmental benefits, economic prosperity, less road congestion, more personal social connections, and finally, more rest and sleep. Yes, Lindsay, that is a long <laughs> what list. What can we but be talking about? There's one common denominator. It's huge and impactful. What is it? It's public transit. Public transit influences all these things and many more. Right. And today we have two guests to talk about these impacts for Dublin and all of Central Ohio. Monica Tejas Fowler is president and CEO of CODA, the Central Ohio Transit Authority. J.M. Rayburn, a repeat guest, friend of Link Ahead, is a transportation and mobility planner for the city of Dublin. J.M. and Monica, welcome to Link Ahead. Thank you. Thank you. We'll talk a lot today about another link, CODA's collaborative mobility initiative called Link Us. Monica, before we dive into a lot of transportation details here, you are new as the president and CEO of CODA. So how's your first month been? It's been a great experience. Um, I was a deputy CEO for um, almost a year um, prior to accepting this role. So I've been um, with CODA since March of 2023. Um, The first 100 days are really focused on um, really spending time with the 1,100 plus employees um, and getting out into the community um, and building relationships. That's really the focus right now. Aside from, of course, really getting out into the community and educating people about what Link Us is and about the great things that um, CODA has planned so that we are positioning ourselves for the next 30 years. Awesome. All right. So let's jump right in with Link Us. Can you tell us what it is and all the good stuff that goes along with it? Thanks so much for the opportunity to share with Dublin listeners the exciting work that's being done here and all across CODA service area to improve CODA and access all the things that truly make our communities exceptional. Uh, Link Us is a comprehensive transportation plan to address tremendous growth. And thanks to our partners, the city of Columbus, Morpsey, and communities like Dublin, uh, we have a well-rounded plan that has something for everyone. Expanding current CODA service by 45%, a more fixed route, and microtransit here in Dublin, and providing at least uh, five rapid transit uh, corridors, including one right here in Dublin, and building sidewalks, bikeways, trails that make the communities more accessible and connected. Uh, So this is not only to address the growth, but it's also increasing accessibility for the 14th largest region in the United States. We have part of that planning team right here in JM. So JM, this has got to be like, yes, <laughs> this is a boom, this is happening. You took the words out of my mouth, Bruce. It's, <laughs> it's a very exciting opportunity, not only for Dublin, but the entire region at large. It's an opportunity to elevate our transit and transportation network. And there's a lot in it for Dublin as well. Well, let's talk about this in several ways. First, you mentioned the growth perspective. Numbers don't lie. By 2050, the regional population is projected to top 3 million As Mayor Ginther of Columbus said, we can't build enough infrastructure fast enough for a million more cars. So this is the alternative to that, right? Right. Um, What we're talking about is it's really uh, critical. So what we're expecting is a million more people to move into the region. And they aren't all moving to Columbus. They're going to move to the suburbs. Sure, right. Uh, That's where we'll see a lot of the growth. We need multiple transportation options. Uh, to avoid the congestion of our regions and um, our country that uh, that other places in our country are facing. So I've been in transit for nearly 15 years, and I've been a part of uh, teams that have uh, done major um, transit projects in both Texas and in Washington state. I've witnessed how public transit really can transform uh, people's lives and communities. So I'm excited to be here and be a part of that, bringing modern transit, rapid transit, to this region that really deserves it. I love the sound of that because developing mass transit solutions isn't a want. It is a critical need. Like Lindsay talked about those numbers. I mean, it's not going to get any better. We can't build more lanes. I remember when I first started coming to Dublin, it was two lanes on 270. Now there's four lanes and it just seems like there are never going to be enough lanes of traffic. You're absolutely right. It's not possible to build the roads necessary to Um, accommodate the additional growth that we're expecting. And so really we need to be thinking about, you know, historically maybe we have had a uh, region that is very car centric, but it also doesn't allow us to um, consider all modes of transportation. And so we really need to focus in on uh, building that system that is inclusive of all transportation modes. So whether it's bikes, cars, transit, pedestrians, 
just making it a safe, accessible community. So let's talk about this from an opportunity standpoint. There are what's called opportunity gaps, such as 40,000 Franklin County residents lacking access to a personal vehicle. Mass Transit helps level that for job opportunities, getting to doctor's appointments, or just taking a family to a downtown festival. So this is really about opportunities, right? Absolutely. And on top of that, we want to help not only visitors and our residents, but also our workforce. So we have our uh, Dublin Connector Shuttle, which helps augment CODA's fixed route service. We hope that this macro transit service will continue to bolster and support our fixed route service for not only our residents and our visitors, but again, our workforce, which relies on um, you know, safe, easy, accessible, and fast transit to get to their places of employment. Right, JM, that's really important. And I know that that's why the Northwest Corridor was selected for this is because there's more than 30% of jobs are located in our region. So um, yeah, it really is about workforce. It is workforce. I mean, we think about um, public transit and for some, it's it's a lifeline. For others, it's really, it's really a, uh, a life choice. It's about making decisions that make their lives a little easier. So when we think about that, you know, uh, Linkus is really uh, focused on making uh, transit accessible um, and whatever that mode may be. You know, it's also about creating a uh, community or a region uh, where we are able to attract and retain young talent. And uh, a lot of uh, younger people are really looking for alternatives and not just um, the, the one answer. You know, you think about um, vehicles and the average car payment for a new car payment uh, is 726 and for uh, used cars, it's 533. Those are choices that people have to make. And it's not, uh, you're absolutely right, it, it's not accessible for everyone. And so having those options uh, really makes a difference and Link Us will do that. That's more than I paid for an apartment back in the day. <laughs> and that's it, uh, and it's that's quite an expense. And I will say that, you know, I have a senior in high school and a lot of his friends don't have, they don't have their driver's license. It's like they just go by bike or, you know, jump on the bus. Yeah, Quick. that's a car payment. Can you imagine maintaining it uh, and that yeah. gas, insurance, yeah. all of those other things um, that add up? All right. So you're both making that dollars and cents arguments. So let's dive into that just a little bit more. Linkus makes traveling without a car more affordable and more convenient. Are there a couple examples? So I, I mentioned that, uh, you know, the average car payment is 726 for a new vehicle or 533 for use. Compare that to at most on Coda Transit, it's $62 a month for service. Wow. Uh, so it really is a great opportunity for the whole region. But, you know, let's bring it back to Dublin. <laughs> JM, let's talk about the proposed specifics for Dublin included in Link Us. Dublin is positioned to benefit from Link Us with the Northwest Corridor, starting in downtown, going up Olentine River Road to Bethel. That's phase one. Phase two would go from Bethel Road to uh, Salmo all the way to Bridge Park. So uh, phase two would incorporate parts of Dublin, which is very exciting. And then we see the final phase of the corridor extending from Bridge Park all the way to the western part of our city. Think of um, OU's branch campus, but also our proposed passenger rail station that we're planning there would be a great tie-in for a lot of these systems to interface at places like a train station. Other than the more bikeways and trails and sidewalks that Monica mentioned as part of the supportive infrastructure that would be part of Link Us, there are also opportunities to expand Coda Plus. So I mentioned the Dublin Connector. That's our microtransit service that is funded by the City of Dublin City Council. Uh, the Coda Plus would be another microtransit service that is operated by Coda, which would provide benefits uh, for Dublin to be on a regional system, much like Grove City and Westerville and other communities. So there's opportunities for us to grow, uh, to expand more into the regional transit system with Coda Plus. What's really exciting are some Coda lines that are going to be extended over the next five years as part of the short range transit plan that Coda has uh, brought forward. That includes lines 32 and 35. So one would uh, extend from OSU Medical Center's main campus, meander through Hilliard, and then get to uh, OSU's outpatient care facility. Wow. And then the other one would extend, um, would create a crosstown connection from Dublin Methodist Hospital going all the way to Intel in New Albany. So that crosstown connection would be huge for Dublin uh, and residents and other workforce that need to use that route back and forth. So we started talking about the many benefits of mass transit provides, and there are exponential benefits too. Economically, for every 10 million in transmit investments, business sales increase by 30 million. 
according to uh, the American Public Transportation Association, every dollar invested in transit generates $5 in economic returns. And every $1 billion invested in transit centers creates 50,000 new jobs. Linkus is an $8 billion investment across every community in Central Ohio. It's an economic driver for every corner of our service area. 87% of all trip, public transit uh, trips have a direct impact on the local economy. That's amazing. And there are also a lot of health benefits too. Maybe JM, you could speak to that. We found with especially our older populations, getting away from isolationism, transit plays an important role in helping with those health outcomes. Um, for example, older adults may not have the means or the resources to go around our community, but also it could be younger adults uh, who don't have the simple means to own a car, as Monica mentioned. It really touches the whole spectrum of the community on who can benefit from more transit access. Um, it could be also people who maybe have their car that's in the shop or other other instances where it'd be nice to have an alternative to driving one or two days. I mean, even the social connectivity, Robert Putnam, the author of Bowling Alone, says for every 10 minutes of travel time by car, social connections are reduced by 10%. That's an interesting statistic. Uh, when I go on vacation or travel for work, I think the first thing I do is, um, especially if I'm with families or colleagues, is I want to jump on the public transit in, in that community. For me, there's no better way to see the city and really kind of um, uh, find your way around places. But it also just kind of provides a relaxing experience where you can actually talk and really look um, and be engaged uh, without having to, someone to keep the eye on the road or, or focus on driving. Monica, uh, prior to CODA, you were deputy CEO of Clark County Public Transit in Vancouver, Washington. Washington as a state inched up from number eight to number seven nationally on the list of states with the highest public transit usage. Ohio, by the way, is 26th on that same list. What can we learn from our West Coast friends here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, well, you've done your homework uh, there. Um, so we built, before I left, we were um, planning on three BRT lines um, and possibly more. The first one, you know, met its challenges, and that's just, uh, it has to do with bringing something to the community that people are unfamiliar with and unprepared to, to know how to interact with. But I will say that, you know, come the second one, the city made a lot of changes, you know, really focused in on, um, you know, making bike um uh, pathways more uh, protected, um, increasing pedestrian walkways, really connecting the, to the trails. And by the by, the time we were to the second one, we had just really kind of nailed down how to make this work. We had communities reaching out to us asking, you know, how do I get one of those transit set, uh, stops near my business? <laughs> yeah, um, really kind of looking for that. Uh, that the second line actually um, in Vancouver came in on schedule and under budget, and it was really something the FTA took and touted and said, "This is how you do this thing." So I fully expect that to happen here. But I, you know, I have um, hopes that that will happen on the first one because we have a community that's really excited about what's coming. I think uh, the region, this region, just has historically not factored public transit in the city planning, um, and Coda just built its system around that. This honestly hindered some of the accessibility for transit for some people. Uh, but like much of the Midwest, it's made it, us a very car-centric region. Link Us, though, really demonstrates the incredible collaborative effort um, with every community, including Dublin, uh, that is really about thinking the way Central Ohio thinks about transit. So it's uh, truly a plan that's engaged more than 40 communities in our region and we really can convince people to utilize public transit when we make the investment necessary to make public transit more convenient, accessible, and it'll shift that dynamic on our in our region. Yeah, I feel like this is Columbus growing up, and we need to have the public infrastructure to support that. Well, and it's funny because I'm in Clinton, Clintonville, and they used to have trolleys that came down because Clintonville was a suburb. Downtown, <laughs> and it's like, man, why did we get rid of this stuff? Like, Yeah, trolleys are cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jam, you have some experience in this realm, too. You studied abroad in Brazil in college where bus rapid transit was first launched in the 70s uh, and then refined, refurbished in the 90s. So speak uh, about the benefits of BRT. Yes, I was very fortunate to study abroad in Curitiba, Brazil uh, in undergrad. This was back in 2007, so over 15 years ago. Oh, boy. <laughs> However, you're yeah, just a youngster. <laughs> <laughs> However, I studied abroad there, lived with a host family, and I would take 
their bus rapid transit every day to the university downtown for school or other errands that I needed to do. It was very intuitive as a foreigner. I, of course, I was learning to speak the language, sure. but it speaks to the ease that we should aspire towards in our system. That if you don't speak English as a first language, you will be able to navigate the system with ease. And it's also about providing those important connections. So I lean on my experience in Brazil, living abroad in that city that first created bus rapid transit. Uh, they had a few challenges. A lot of one was cost. So this is a very cost effective sure. way to move a lot of people. And I think that's one of the um, highlights of why we're choosing bus rapid transit for high capacity in our region. And you've talked about the um, transit support of infrastructure and Dublin, huge fan of shared use paths, right? So we already have 150 plus miles of walkable, bikeable paths. Uh, what's your best pitch to get residents to use them even more? We are the first silver level bicycle friendly community. Yes, we All are. Right, yes, love it. We, are. Snaps. <laughs> <laughs> we have to reapply for a designation in a few years. So it would be great if we can make the case to be a gold level bicycle friendly community. So that is where we'd like to head. It may take some time, but I think if we continue to reinvest in our shared use paths, our sidewalks, our trails, other infrastructure that supports transit and micro mobility, I think that will position us at least to get within reach of a gold. More than that, I mean, we have provided a list of projects to the Link Us team in terms of transit supportive infrastructure. And we submitted eight projects totaling over $30 million that we can have paid for, not by Dublin taxpayers per se, but right. by this local funding that Linkos would create. So I think that's a huge selling point for the community that if you don't take transit every day, there's still a lot of benefit in there for you to support this initiative. Absolutely. So Monica, as these plans further, they get fleshed out uh, over the coming months and years, how can uh, Central Ohio residents stay informed in the process and have their opinions heard? Thank you for asking that because public feedback um, has also been factored into this initiative over the past four years. It's important to be informed because all voters in CODA's service area will decide this when it comes to the um, on the ballot this November. So anyone can go to linkuscolumbus.com uh, right now and learn about the initiative and how it will benefit their community. You can also leave comments and questions, which we quickly respond to. And we're also providing Dublin with information about every project Link Us will help fund in this community. All right. Well, as we said at the beginning, rapid fire questions are always our go-to closing segment. So let's jump in. These are for both of you. Um, besides NYC and Washington, D.C., name another city that maybe flies under the radar that's great for mass transit. Just coming from the West Coast, I'm going to say uh, probably uh, Seattle or Portland, and that has a lot to do with the accessibility. People have options, uh, whether they want to bike, ride, uh, drive. Uh, there's there's so many options, and you can get basically anywhere in those regions. I think a city to keep an eye on is Chicago. They've made a lot of progress with encouraging more bicycle commuters and more people to bicycle along and use other forms of transportation. Um, I was in Philadelphia last year for a conference, and I was impressed also with all the different opportunities they have to get around town. And then D.C., I say, I mean, we mentioned D.C., but I like a lot of what they're doing as well. <laughs> nice. Yeah. All right. When both of you want to unwind, what does it entail? Walk, run, or bike ride? Monica. Walk for me. And typically, it's a walk with my husband. It's probably the few times we get to really just chat and um, unwind. Awesome. Jam. I do enjoy walking, but biking and world leading is also fun with friends. All right. Jam, we have to ask every Dubliner, uh, what's your favorite <laughs> lunch and dinner spot in Dublin? All right. Favorite lunch? Is I'm not saying North Market. I do a lunch bunch every every month with my oh, my team, and we go to North Market. Great answer, Monica. We ask a lot of rapid fire food questions, but for you, it has to be a multi partner given your career stops. So, Washington State, famous for fresh seafood. Have you found a favorite seafood spot in Central Ohio? You know, I haven't. Uh, <laughs> I have been a little busy with work. Um, and wow. Yeah. No and, time to yes. eat. <laughs> no time to eat. And the other thing is my husband is just a great cook, so it's wow. really hard to kind of compete with that. But I'm always looking for recommendations, good date night options, what have you. So if you have any, send them my way. All right. You went to two universities in Texas and worked for Mass Transit in Fort Worth. So what do you look for in a good Tex-Mex and good barbecue? Tex-Mex, i um, usually looking for uh, chili con carne and cheese. <laughs> okay, so, uh, and barbecue in Texas, we like to eat our bar uh, barbecue with um, onions, pickles, and bread. And that's something that you don't see in other uh, parts of the country. So, 
Let's be honest, mass transit isn't exactly clickbait material on TikTok. Can you give our listeners one cool fun fact about it? So um, I guess I'd ask a little question. Do you know that uh, last summer public transit got quite a resurgence across the country? Uh, some cities had uh, record numbers in just one or two nights. Uh, you want to know what that what caused that surge in ridership? Man, I am clueless. Whoa, Please. Wait, 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 she's wait, turning it on us guess. and asking us questions. So we're not prepared. I don't know. It was Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift. Oh, I mean, there was so much wow. ridership in Chicago last summer. It comes back to yeah. Taylor Swift. Transit There's your is, clickbait, It Bruce. was 5.6 million in Chicago, uh, over wow. 140,000 trips uh, over three nights. Philadelphia saw triple the ridership numbers. Swifties love transit. <laughs> There's well, our there's headline. Your... <laughs> but that's a good example because I ride Coda when I go to football games. So it's the best way to get down to a game. So when you get that casual rider, all those Swifties, to me, like not that I'm a Swifty, but um, how do you hook them and then bring them back home to take transit uh, to be like, hey, this is my mindset now? I think something like that really has the potential to demonstrate how incredible transit is. Um, you really think about making trips to whether it's a football game or a Taylor Swift concert. It's really about, you know, I was able to get there safe. I was able to get pretty close to the venue. I was able to do whatever I'm going to do at those venues and get back safely as well. It's all about that access safe, reliable. That's what we're going to do here with LinkFest. Awesome. Well, that's a great way to end this episode. JM and Monica, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. It's better the second time around. All right. <laughs> Thanks so much for uh, inviting me. It's been a pleasure. And to our listeners, thank you as well for taking the time to connect with your city. Tune in next time as we continue to explore the many personalities and experiences that make Dublin a thriving place to live, work, and grow. 